Who did you give that flower to? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Thank you. That's absolutely lovely. It's, it's Valentine's time of year and uh, Brady has decided that uh, we should talk about attraction because attraction is Valentine's Day. So generally forces of attraction when we're talking about Valentine's Day mean people falling in love and what holds them together. And he's so kind, he loves me. He's brought me a flower. Well, of course I'm a physicist so I have to look into it a little bit more deeply than that. And we're going to talk about um, forces of attraction and basically the forces uh, of nature. There are four main forces that we're aware of, four fundamental forces. There's a strong force, there's what we call the weak force, there's gravity and there's electromagnetic forces. There could be more, we're looking for more, we're always testing for them but at the moment there are four and uh, they're gravity, uh, why we stay on the earth, why the moon goes round the earth. But actually it's an unbelievably weak force compared to the force that stops me being able to push my hand through this desk which is the um, uh, uh, interaction between the electrons, the electromagnetic force, or the electrostatic force, um, gravity is unbelievably weak. Gravity, right, here we go. Gravity in action. My first experiment on uh <laughs> on 60 symbols. I was trying to come up with an analogy or an everyday example to compare the magnitude of the gravitational force to the magnitude of the electromagnetic force because it's, it's really quite difficult to get across just how weak gravity is compared to that electromagnetic force. And so if we, if we take this petal which I've taken off the rose, let's say it's about a gram. It's about a gram weight. So we drop it down, gravitational force tracks it down. Um, to get the ratio of the magnitude of the gravitational force to the electromagnetic force, you'd have to, you'd have to compare the weight of this to the weight of, and I hope I remember this correctly, four million billion 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 air buses. So the weight of four million billion 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 air buses compared to the weight of this petal is the same as the magnitude or the difference between or the ratio between the electromagnetic force and the gravitational force. It's that much different. The force is so much different. Then there's electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is why the sun and the light that we're seeing from, uh, not from the sun here, but from, from our um, light bulbs up there. And uh, also you know, the light that's coming off the, the petals here and that we can see their electromagnetic rays, their light that's coming to us. The key thing for me is the chemical bond, so it's the electromagnetic force. That what, that's what dictates um, the bonds in this, it's di what dictates the colour, it what, it's what dictates the stiffness, it's what dictates the sort of feel of it, it's, it dictates everything. Those electromagnetic interactions are the essence of this of this rose. They, 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 they define, for me, and I think for pretty well all physicists, they define what it means. How do things experience force one on the other? At first we thought that it was an instantaneous process. You see something over here and something over there and they're attracted by gravity which pulls instantaneously together. Or you see a charge here and another charge over there and they're pulled together instantaneously. And the idea came about that you could actually think of the charge over here producing electric field and the field pulling it in. And then later on it was realised that this electric field can't get from here to there instantaneously because it can only travel at the speed of light. So this is giving out a little bit of information which is arriving there a little bit later because it can only travel at the speed of light and this thing gets pulled in bit by bit in that way. So it's not instantaneous the attraction between objects. We've got the weak force next. Let's do the weak force because they, they, I think gravity and electromagnetism uh, people are quite familiar with but the, the weak force maybe not so much. The weak force acts within an atom, in fact it acts within a nucleus of an atom, the, the very small center, central region of an atom. Uh, but it's fundamental. It accounts for why the sun burns. Some, some objects are, radi uh, are radioactive. They'll decay. And in, in decaying, they might emit a particle and they'll emit some radiation. And that process, the force that's responsible for that, the interaction responsible for it, is the weak interaction. But it only acts on very small scales. And, and then there's the, 
the big forces of the strongest of them in the sense of their effect on individual particles and that's the strong force and the strong force also acts within the uh, the center of a, of, of a nucleus of an atom and it's what stops as exploding and that's what's holding the, the, the nuclei together but the in, other than sort of keeping the atoms together, so making this sure this thing doesn't explode due to the repulsion of the of the, of the of the of the protons, really I neglect the strong force. I don't really care about the strong force. It's not something that influences my experiments. It's not something I have to consider in my experiments. Indeed, in the first year um, module, I'm currently teaching about the interactions of atoms and molecules. I put up the four fundamental forces: is strong, weak gravity, electromagnetic, put a big X true strong, big X true weak, big X true gravity and say we're only going to concentrate on the electromagnetic forces. The rose is, got, is made of carbon. There's carbon in there. Each carbon atom has I think of order six protons. And uh, from school we learned that the proton has a positive charge. And we know that things that have got the same charge actually want to repel, like charges repel. So in the, in the center of a nucleus which is incredibly small distance, around 10, about one Fermi it's called, 10 to the minus 15 meters, that's no point, and then uh, 14 zeros and a one meter. Within that there's six protons, all pushing apart. So they don't want to stay there, but we, they do stay there fortunately, because that's what keeps the stem here uh, nice and solid, and, and it's the that it's the strong force within there that actually overcomes the, the repulsive nature of electromagnetism within for, the, for these protons and binds them together. So we have these four forces, completely different, and yet one of the great goals of physics, of, of, of theoretical physics, is actually to unify these forces. It's actually to try and describe them as one. And uh, there's been a, a degree of success in that. In fact, Faraday, uh, back in the 19th century showed that electricity and magnetism were two, two manifestations of the same force and they called it electromagnetism. And then in the late 60s and early 70s people began to show that you could have electromagnetism and the weak force, they could be represented as the same underlying force and that was called the electroweak interaction and that was confirmed experimentally at places like CERN in, near Geneva, the particle accelerator. And then people started thinking about what about the strong force? Could we introduce the strong force with the weak force and the electromagnetic force? And, and that's been shown to be the case in what's known as quantum chromodynamics, QCD, where you can represent all of these three forces under the same mathematical umbrella. They describe them all beautifully. But gravity is proving most difficult. And that remains to be the, 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 the goal to try and also bring gravity into, into this big picture.